Living in the middle of a global pandemic is many people paying closer attention to their health and what they would do in a worst case scenario. Depending on your circumstances, critical illness insurance could play a role in protecting your loved ones. And Peter Sashecki from Everything Financial joins us this morning with what you need to know before you buy. Good morning, Peter. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Carrie. Good morning. So a lot of people might have questions about critical illness insurance and whether or not they should get it. First of all, tell us what the difference is between basic and enhanced critical illness insurance. Sure. Well, a basic critical illness insurance will cover, as they call it, um, for some reason, the big three, which is heart attack, stroke, and cancer, because those are the main three illnesses. So if you, unfortunately, are diagnosed with one of those illnesses uh, and still had that illness 30 days later, the critical illness insurance will pay you out a lump sum of tax-free money. That's the basic. The enhanced can list 20 to I've seen up to 27 other illnesses and diseases that it would also cover you for. And there's quite a price difference in the basic and the enhanced. But one is three illnesses and one is over 20 illnesses. Interesting. I don't think a lot of people would know about that. Uh, what is the 30 day waiting period? So the 30 day waiting period is how you would collect. So if you if you get diagnosed with one of the one of the qualifying illnesses and to put it really bluntly, you're still alive 30 days later and luckily you, you you know you're getting treatment etc then they will pay you out and if you passed away in that time unfortunately the critical illness wouldn't pay you out obviously your life insurance coverage if you had that would pay you out but you have to be undergoing treatment you've survived the 30 days and then it will pay you after 30 days and again tax-free uh, payment like a life insurance policy in that respect right so what is the return of premium option and is it worth it for people yeah, the return of premium option is just like it sounds. If if you pay an extra premium on top of the, the regular premium, so you're paying an enhanced premium, and if you never developed critical illness, you never had anything that qualified, and, and in most cases age 65 hits, they will give you back all the money you've paid in. But the great, great question that you said is, should you get it? And the answer is no, and here's why. If you took that extra premium, and you invested that money yourself, that's the key. You have to invest it in your TFSA or your RSP. And normally you just made a modest return of 5%. Then cashing in that money at the end would give you more than the return of premium by doing it through the insurance company. So don't pad the commission, invest the extra yourself and cash that in later on if you're so fortunate that you never need the critical illness insurance. Yeah, and you did touch on this, but is the benefit taxable, Peter? No, if you're if you're paying the premium out of your income and you're not claiming that um, premium or deducting it on your insurance, which you shouldn't be doing, then it's tax-free, just like life insurance, because the premium came from your taxable income, so the benefit then would be tax-free, like life insurance, like a lot of disability insurance we've talked about before, um, a tax-free benefit to help you help your family in a time of need. Okay, here's the big question. Uh, a lot of people are going to get it. How much to get? Uh, that's the big question. How do you decide? That's the big question. And a lot of times it's sold on the guilt factor is, oh, get this coverage and you can go down to the States or you can go here and get private health care and, and private uh, medical attention for that, you know, illness, injury, disease, whatever the case may be. But really look at it this way, if you couldn't work anymore and you were disabled, uh, you got one of these illnesses, how much money do you need to put away as a lump sum to let that money grow so you have retirement money? Because when you get disabled, ill, your disability, your pension contributions, your RSP contributions stop because you're getting disability coverage. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to save for retirement? So look at the lump sum needed, talk to your registered financial planner. Get them to do the calculation to see what you need. Good advice this morning. Peter Susecki from Everything Financial Group. Thanks, Peter. Have a great day. Thanks. Have a great day.